We're going to talk about intersective adjectives using a type shifting approach for our lambda calculus. So let's consider two different sentences, look at entailment and figure out what intersective adjectives even are. So in the first example, we have Fido is a happy dog. The adjective here is happy. Now what we can get from this entailment is that Fido is a dog and Fido is happy. So basically, if we have this form, an adjective plus a noun with this happy adjective, we get the fact that they're an adjective and they're a noun. So they have both of those properties independent. But what about in this example? Fido, Fido is a former dog. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, you would want to say if this were the same type of adjective, that an adjective plus a noun would there or give us them being the property of being an adjective plus a noun. But first of all, it doesn't make sense to say that Fido is former. That doesn't make sense. We need to have former something. And also, if Fido is a former dog, then it's implied that Fido is no longer a dog. So actually, in this case, um, it really just means not N in this case. But it could mean that in the past, of course, the implication there, the presupposition is that Fido was in fact a dog in the past. But the types of adjectives we want to investigate today are these ones. And these are called intersective adjectives because if you think about the properties, this is something that has the properties of being the both an adjective and a noun in that sense. So we want to motivate an intersective adjective definition because we've done adjectives so far. So what we know what an adjective happy should be is it should be a type ET and we should have something like lambda x dot x is happy. Now, as this moves up to the tree, we have an ET here and we suddenly have a type clash because we have an ET and we have an ET and what we get out of it is an ET. And that is not what we want in this case. So we don't think that happy can actually survive as an ET. In fact, one way that we can fix this type matching issue is to introduce the adjective phrase as an ET ET. Okay, so what would this look like? Well, I wrote the rest of the tree out so we can have some motivator because what we want happy to do is we want to have the intersective meaning as part of the definition for happy. So what I suggest is that we would have something like lambda x dot x is happy, but we want that intersective nature into it. So I'm going to say and there's some predicate x that is going to follow after. And what we can do out front is put a lambda p to abstract for that predicate. So as this goes up the tree, we'll use this new definition. This is an ET ET. We're going to get function application on the top now because what we're going to get in our insertion here is lambda x dot x is a dog. I'll just write that like this. And that is going to apply to the predicate p and then you're going to get binding and your final result is going to be lambda x dot x is happy and x is a dog. So that's going to come out super nicely. We've now determined that intersective adjectives can be used as an ETET. -ET. That's how we're going to define it. That encodes the meaning great. Well, actually, it's not great because we're going to run into an issue with things like is happy, which is the predicate adjective form because if we remember what is is, this is lambda p dot p. This is an et et. But the adjective phrase that we just said that is intersective is supposed to now be et et. But we know in the end what we actually want is something like an et out top. We want the verb phrase to be lambda x dot x is happy. So how are we going to get this? Well, the best solution that we have is that we just have an et happy and we do what we did before. Or perhaps we could go even a little bit further and we could say, well, what if we now made this a type ET ET that sends it off to another ET? Well, let's see how that works out. So we're going to say that intersective adjectives actually take an unpronounced modifier that takes the bare form to an intersective form. And that is what it's going to look like an ET ET comma ET. Sorry, I should say this is backwards from what I said. We're going to insert an ET into here. We're going to get out an ET ET. So what is this going to look like? We're going to have lambda x dot x is happy. We attach the modifier, do some function application, and then we're going to get lambda p dot lambda x dot x is happy and px. So this is how I think we should start because we know what has to be in here already. Lambda p dot lambda x. What we have x is happy. Now the thing is we don't actually know 
the happy meaning at this point. So this is actually just another predicate that hasn't been defined yet. So we can do lambda p prime, or if we don't want to do p prime, let's pick a different letter just because I don't like doing primes either. Let's say qx. So this can be lambda q dot lambda p dot lambda x. And now this will be qx and px. So what I did to get this was I just kind of looked at the end result of what we want and I filled in the missing links or I shouldn't say filled in the missing links, but I took the links that were filled in and I removed them and abstracted them with our variables. So now what's going to happen is when we apply lambda x dot x is happy, it is going to fill in the qx position to get happy x and our result is going to be x is happy and px with the lambda p lambda x still out front. So now what we can do in a tree is if happy is just on its own, it's not being a direct modifier, like it's not occurring immediately before the noun as an intersective adjective, we leave it as is. But if we want it to get its intersective meaning within a noun phrase, we apply the intersective modifier and we get our new et et out of it to be compatible. So the example I want to do is Sundeep is a bright boy, just so we can see how this all works out. Uh, sorry, I said smart boy, bright boy, it's interchangeable. They both mean the same thing. So I just want to show this in action on the bottom bit. We don't have to do the whole thing. So it's going to start as an ET for smart. So this is going to be lambda x dot x is smart. Okay, and what we're going to do from there is we're going to modify it because it's being intersective in this case because it's going to be smart boy, so that'll be ET, ET. And what we should be getting is lambda P, lambda X. Um, I'm just gonna keep it in predicate logic for now. So smart X and PX for whatever PX is. Okay, so the modifier, we're basically just filling in what we had before. Remember, we're taking two predicates, P and Q, we're taking a variable X, and we're taking the conjunction of those two to get the intersective meaning, QX and PX. So we do our application, we're gonna get lambda P, lambda X, smart X and PX. Once we stick boy in there, which by the way, would be lambda x dot x is a boy. Then what we're gonna get at the NP node, finally we can do some application again because N is a type ET. So this means that our NP is going to be type ET as well, which is lambda x dot, well, now we're going to basically combine the two together. So uh, smart x and boy x. So smart x and boy x. And we can just switch between this and natural language at any time. Now I do wanna do one more because we haven't done a uh yet in this case, but just to show you what this is, is this really is going to act just like um, the verb, the copula is. We're just gonna say that this is lambda p dot p, just like is, pump out the same thing. Because what a uh says, it just says at least one. It just establishes, establishes existence. Sundeep is smart boy, has the same effect as Sundeep is a smart boy. It's just for grammatical purposes that don't need to be encoded. So. As this goes through, this means that these lambda p's dot p's are going to be spitting out the same thing as we go up the chain. And then in our final node, if we say that Sundeep is S, then this is going to be true if and only if um, Sundeep is smart, because that would be X is smart. And S, I didn't write out the whole name, is a boy. So that would be the whole tree for Sundeep is a bright boy. I hope you understand more about intersective adjectives now and how we can do them in our Lambda, cal cal in our lambda Calculus. Uh, we are going to look at function application later, which is a way of doing this without any type shifting. Um, but the method that's used currently, it really depends on the linguist that you talk to.